All right, friends, we are now in the season of love, so let's start decorating for it. So today we are going to work on this beautiful, sweet little felt ball garland with its little cute little hearts because it's heart time. So walk along with me with these super easy steps to make your own super cute, adorable felt ball garland. So all you need is all your felt balls, an awl, a, ne Whoa! a needle that we're not throwing around our needles. I like to get the needles with the wide eyed because it just helps string the thick twine, which is our next thing we need is twine and some pliers. So I am using a four foot long piece of twine but normally I do all of my garlands in six feet length, but I mean, let's be real, like my, my arms are so long for video that I can only hold and you can only see so much, so four feet it is for today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one end of our twine and we're gonna tie a little loop. So I'm literally making a loop with my fingers and then we're just gonna tie a knot at the end. A little bit longer. Woo! I'm gonna do that first, and then this is just kind of like our end here. I always like putting little loops at the end. It just makes it perfect for hanging wherever you're doing that. If you're using nails, tacks, whatever, it's just nice to have a little loop at the end. Plus it's a nice little stopper point for your felt ball so they're never gonna just slide off the end. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our needle. I use a large eyed needle here. The twine is pretty thick, so it makes it easier to thread when there you have more of a, a nice big hole to thread it through. I'm gonna go ahead and thread that through, make a little tail. When I first start, I make kind of a decent sized tail just so that nothing, you don't wanna unstring your needle midway through because that's just annoying. Next step you're gonna do is we're gonna arrange our felt balls into a pattern. So for this garland, I am doing, let's just start with our white ball and we're gonna do like our nice pink, pink, our burgundy, our heart. And then we're just gonna kinda keep repeating this pattern. It's kinda like a little bit of an ombre action going on except for that it's not really ombre. <laughs> Cause that pink heart kind of messes the ombre tone. So we're gonna go ahead and set our pattern out. And this just kind of helps keep us organized. So if we start getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, going too quickly, we're definitely not gonna be making mistakes along the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep going here. So we have our nice pattern. That way it's just quick grab and go for our whole thing. So we can do the threading two different ways. You can grab an awl, which you can find these at local hardware stores, or I'll link below to the one that I use. And you're gonna go ahead and just make a hole in every single ball. It takes a little bit of effort, and please be careful to not stab yourself, because from experience, it does not feel good. So it definitely makes a nice little hole on the top and the bottom, and just helps feed your needle through. So doing this method, you could easily just throw your needle in here. Oops, get it through that same hole that you threaded and then just thread it through. And I like to put it all the way at the bottom. I like to use my pliers if you have them. So I just put my pliers on my needle and thread it and pull it through. So the reason why you need a little bit of strength is because at the end of this needle, it gets pretty thick with the eye for holding on your thread and the two strands of thread here, it just gets thick and it gets a little hard to pull through with your fingers. So having the pliers definitely helps. It just saves on you trying to pull it through with your fingers and accidentally hurting yourself. So now we're at our heart. So when you're stringing the heart, you're gonna wanna string it more towards the top because if you notice when you're, let's see, I'll string it and I'll kind of show you. So if it's like this, you have a lot of the weight on the bottom and it'll hang correctly. If you were to say string it at the bottom on your string, it's gonna fall and the weight of it and gravity is gonna pull your heart and it's gonna be upside down. So it's really important when you're stringing any sort of shapes to string them to mostly at the top. So if you see, I'm kind of right at the top here. And then that way when it's on your twine and hanging, it's going to hang in the correct direction like so. So we're just gonna keep going and keep threading. 
And this is just such a fun craft to do. It's super relaxing and it's just super fun and it adds so much to your home. So link below to my shop and I've got kits actually so that you can make your own felt ball garlands at home for any season. So all of the kits will come with a needle, the twine, all of the felt balls you need to make this super adorable felt ball garland. I love these so much because they're so fun to interchange for every season. I love having a birthday one. So every time I decorate for one of my kiddos' birthdays, we pull the birthday ball garland out. And it's just so fun to decorate with. So this is, we're just gonna keep on going here. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you the way I store these. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can definitely design a felt ball garland that you can leave up all year, but especially for these seasonal ball garlands, you're definitely gonna wanna store them correctly because they can get tangled up really easy and nobody wants to waste their time sitting there untangling your garlands before you're gonna hang them. So I'm running out of space up here, so I'm gonna start fishing these down. And as far as spacing, I usually wait till the end but I kind of have a good idea of where I want them. So that way I can just kind of get them started now. So that way I can have more room to finish up here. So that's the one thing I love about these felt balls too, is that when you put them on, they're not moving at all. And you can slide them up and down and they just move so nice and gracefully that it's so handy. So all the kits online are gonna be kits for six feet long, but that doesn't limit you to doing it shorter. You could always cut your twine down. You could always um, do like a four foot garland and a two foot garland. You're, it's totally open and you can see how easy it would be just to cut down your twine. Let's pull out our tail here. So that was all of them. We're gonna go ahead. Now that we have all of our balls on, we're gonna go ahead and make another loop on this end to close it off. There we go. And so now we're gonna go ahead and finish spacing this out. Just, I like to hang it on the wall sometimes. That helps to just like see exactly where everything is. So like for instance, on this side, it's totally at the bottom. So I would shift everything down but that's the fun part. You can just fuss and fuss until it's in the perfect direction the way you like it. But, ta-da! All right, let me go over the trick on how to store these. Because this is a seasonal felt ball garland, you may not wanna leave it out all year long, unless you're going into a cute little nursery, which is another great idea. So to store this, the best way to do it is to slide all of your felt balls all the way to one side. And you can see how easy it is to adjust. So once you're ready to decorate again, how easy it is to just move them right back into place. We're gonna just smush all of them to one side. And just go ahead and twirl them up. And the way I like to store them is I just wrap up this end piece. And then I use, depending on the size of your garland, this is a quart size bag, which is like perfect for this. But if it's a little bit bigger of a garland, you might need a, uh, what is this, the gallon size bag. But I just toss this in my bag here and then this helps eliminate all of those little tangles that are bound to happen. But you just throw that in there, seal it. And then you know it's also safe from the elements depending on where you're storing it. It's not gonna get tangled and it's ready to go for next year. If you found that helpful, or if you can't wait to make your own Valentine's Day felt ball garland, please comment below and let me know. I can't wait to see all of the felt ball garlands that you're gonna make. Please tag me if you're on Instagram at the Hardwood Forest and be sure to like and subscribe and hang out with me and let's do all the fun felt crafts that we can together because let's be friends and have some fun and make some stuff together. Thank you so much for joining me today and check out my other Valentine's Day crafts that are coming up next.